Hey guys, it's Linda Winter with another Winter Designs video. I want to show you the Copy Cozy template. This guy here makes Copy Cozies. Copy Cozies like this. Let's go back to where it all began. Starbucks, wherever, wherever you get your coffee, they probably give you one of these. Even hotels now have this. This guy here turns into a Copy Cozy like this. They're all over the internet. I didn't invent this thing, so it's been out there forever. This is the size that typically you make. And you can see when I hold my coffee cup, my finger here, my finger here, it's not totally on the cozy. I gotta squish together pretty tightly to be able to hold that coffee cup. If I hold it like this, this finger, this finger, they're either hot from a hot drink or cold from a cold drink. So I had ladies in Pensacola that said, don't do this size. That was the size that I did originally. They said, do this size. What that turns into is this. If I look at this, when I made my first template, I increased a half of an inch, a half an inch, half an inch, half an inch. That way you could have a little bit more for your seam allowance. But you can see there's a lot more than a half an inch here. What this is gonna give me is this. This guy here, so my fingers are protected from the heat of the drink or the cold of the drink. I'm gonna show you a few tips on some things that I've improved on since my second video. I already have two videos on it, but none of my videos cover this, this fussy cup frame. Fussy cup frame is for dogs and frogs and bears and toads, or Tina, I'm gonna pan over here, or fabric with coffee stuff. You can see pajamas over here, but I'll show you some other projects too with that. So this is a coffee cozy the way it comes. You can buy the bundle, this plus this, plus I give you elastics. You can pick from the brighter colors or you can pick from the darker colors. These are the kind of elastics that I recommend, but I'm gonna show you a couple more too. So I sell that as a bundle and I sell it separately too. I'm gonna to throw this on the floor so you hear a crash. And I'm going to get this out of the way because we don't need that anymore. All right, what do we want to do? I'm going to just do some basic stuff first, and then I'm going to show you a couple techniques that I've improved upon. I've got my fabric right sides together, and then I've got my batting. You can use batting. You can use um, a diaper material. You can use Insulbright. You can use whatever. Don't do something really stiff. The stiffer it is, the more it's not gonna hold nicely. But think about if it's gonna be a hot drink or a cold drink. I'll show you some towel material a little bit later on. I always tell people when they start with this, use some junky fabric. Maybe it's a um, sheet that you have. Maybe it's fabric you got somewhere, a dollar a yard. And you can see here, when I've got this, there's nothing on here that I like at all, so we wanna practice with this. If we've got dark fabric, imagine it's coffee fabric that's really cute, what we wanna do is do right sides together anyway, but do you see how I can see when I go to cut? The darker fabric, it is harder to see along the edge, so even though I'm recommending right sides together here, what it allows you to do is when you go to stitch, I don't have to flip anything. But if you do have a darker fabric with any of the templates, go ahead and turn that over. I'm gonna get that out of the way too. All right, what do we wanna do? The get a grip grabs our fabric, so when I go to turn, I'll cut, I'll cut, I'll cut, I'll cut, done. I'm gonna use Martelli's rotary cutter. This guy, I roll forward, and when I cut, I'm gonna turn that template as I go and cut along. What that's gonna allow me to do is get a nice clean cut. You can cut two coffee cozies out at a time, but because we're dealing with batting, I recommend one. Right here, I'm using the 45 millimeter. It can handle that curve really well, but if you are doing something thicker than this batting, the 28 millimeter works super well too. And you all know that I'm using the left-handed rotary cutter, but Martelli makes a right-handed rotary cutter in the 28, in the 45, and we make a 60 millimeter rotary cutter on there as well. All right, so we'll finish cutting and I'm done. Let's get rid of this stuff. Let's grab our fabric and I wanna show you basic. What we're gonna do is stitch along, stitch along, stitch along, stitch along. But inside of here, inside of here, we wanna do some things. So if we're gonna do the traditional method that I like, the traditional method is using these elastics, these guys here, we would grab two of those. What we'll do first is stitch them in and then afterwards we'll tie a knot in them. When we stitch them in, I'm basically gonna be placing them inside of here. I've got it going this way, I've got it going this way. When you pin, put a pin here, put a pin here. I show this on the second video and that um, little elastic will be kind of hugging in between. Pin here, pin here, and that will be hugging in between. On this side over here, we're gonna stitch that close. So we stitch around, we're gonna stitch on the elastic, stitch around, stitch around. And then we wanna leave an opening here, leave an opening here, leave an opening here, totally up to you. What I've been recommending to people is that when they do this, if you wanna turn right here, increase your stitch length, give it a good press, once you, you know, do that stitching, press it really, really well, 
And then what we're gonna do when we turn it is take a surgical seam ripper that I have, or any seam ripper that you have, but I like the surgical seam ripper, it's super sharp. And because these are stitches, you can go right in there and rip out those stitches. We also make great tweezers too. You figure out which way you do it. You can see this, I stitch this up super fast, probably without my glasses, doesn't look so great, but you can see how I've got the elastics here. So totally up to you. By the way, one of the things I like to do instead of using buttons is using pins. Why do I want the pin there? Because this is a cup, this is a cup, this is a cup, and this is a cup. Not only do I tie a knot in the elastic to help hold that, you can see this is in the outer hole, this is in the outer hole, but I also, with a pin, I have the ability to scoot it further over or scoot it closer by. I'm gonna show you some samples of buttons and pins and those kinds of things. Okay, so my second video will show you basically that process. But what I wanna take a look at is something that I showed in one of my videos. It wasn't the Coffee Cozy video, but you see this? This is a headband. They make headbands that come three for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. These aren't the colors that maybe they do come together. I think that is actually a set, but these guys I like. I like these a lot better than this. This is way too stretchy. This isn't gonna hold onto your coffee cup. This, it's stiffer, but it's still probably not gonna hold really, really well. This guy here, you can see this is pretty stretchy. I could use this in place of this. It's soft enough that I could tie a knot in it. This would work, but this stuff here, see how thick that is? That would work, but I need to always use the same coffee cup if I'm gonna make this because there's no tying a knot in this kind of stuff. This right here, this is stretchy and you might be able to tie a knot in it, but it's gonna be harder to tie a knot. So you find what works for you, which style it is you like. I like this when I have a fabric that has a focal fabric, the little kitties over here. If I put pins or buttons over here, I wouldn't be able to see those kitties. Over here, you can see, I see my kitties, I see my kitties. So it's kind of up to you with the fabric choice that you make as well. So you choose which elastics. I like these guys because they're thin, they're easy to sew over and I can tie a knot in them. You realize though, these are cheap. There's like 80 to a, a package here. These are not gonna last you forever. So it's, you know, it's one of those things. You kind of have a, I get good and a bad with all this stuff. So these guys here, if I do those, then I'm gonna again, put them inside here, cut this in half basically, put one here, put one here, and we're gonna stitch that down. Over here, you can again, increase that stitch length. And when you go to sew that together, rip that open with your seam ripper. We're gonna put this around our cup and we're gonna decide where we want it to go. So right here, you can see this is almost too big for this guy here. I'm gonna grab this, this is probably a more kind of a typical size of the coffee, coffee cup you're gonna be drinking. What I wanna do is get some kind of a chalk pencil or whatever. And when I pull this tight, you can see I'm pulling that tight and I'm pulling that tight. I'm only gonna worry about the one right now. Right here and right here, it's not the same width. So don't mark here and mark here. I want this to be fitting that cup that I typically will use. Right here is where I would want to be stitching, so I'm gonna put right here my mark. A quarter inch seam allowance, a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm not gonna cut this off, I'm gonna stick that inside when I open this up. Same thing over here. Can you see how much closer that one is here? So I'm gonna put my mark here, put my mark here. When I put this inside, I want that quarter inch seam allowance to go a little bit further in. You can kind of judge as you go. You can then pin, 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 pin super well. You can even use a glue. I don't like using glues for the most part because they're not gonna glue or dry fast enough and it's gonna get stiffer over here. But why do I want all this excess in there? If you give this to somebody that actually does know how to sew and their coffee cup is bigger than this, they can open that up and bring it so that it's a little bit further. If their coffee cup is smaller, they can open that up and then they can tighten that up. So for somebody that does so, or if you wanna customize for your customers or for your friends, having that extra in there makes all the difference. I like these, this style, because I don't need to put a button on there. I don't need to buy a button, I don't need to pick a button, I don't need to sew a button. Tina, let's pan over to some of the buttons. Here are just some of the buttons that I grabbed this morning. These are just plain old buttons. This goes over here. Plain old buttons that you can pick. You can choose to have them matching, you don't have to. What I wanna think about is this guy and another one really big like that. They may be too big. I had some flowers that I put. You guys know me, I always lose things in videos. 
but I had a couple flowers. They were big and they're really pretty, but they're way too big for this. And I'm looking on the table and I don't see them. Okay, so you have regular old buttons and then we're gonna put uh, the camera over here. So here's buttons. These are novelty buttons. You'll find these in the craft section all of, of your local shops. Oh, here's the buttons that I was talking about, these guys. You can see, those are nice. I mean, if you like that style, but they're too big. This guy here and this guy here, not only are they tight there, but when you're holding it, I don't need my fingers holding that. This is gonna be underneath your fingers, so that's really too much. So we don't really wanna use those kind of buttons. But if you look back to here, these novelties, if you're doing a tropical theme, if you're doing a jungle theme, if you've got somebody that's a nurse, somebody that is a kid that is gonna be drinking um, a cold glass of milk or whatever it is, you've got all kinds of cute stuff. Somebody that's having a baby, there's just all kinds of fun things. And somebody that's a little on the wild side, you've, uh, you can find whatever it is you need. These guys here, hot lips for somebody that you love. This is a pin, and then over here, I wanted to show you some of the pins that I found. Your 99 cent stores, your Dollar Trees, those kind of places, they sell these guys. Four for a dollar. Here's six for 99, or five for 99 cents. That one's not gonna do me any good, but these for the holidays. There's some more, there's some more. So you've got lots of choices here. All right, so those guys are things that I can use. This, remember, that's one of those headbands that's too stretchy, so we don't wanna do that. When you make it, this is what it's gonna look like, and then you can tie a knot in it. Linda McGee, he made those for me. My friend Pat made these for me. And now, what I wanna show you, the reason why this video today is this. <coughs> this stuff here, I'm gonna get this out of the way, get this out of the way, fussy cutting. Fussy cutting is when I have something that I wanna have centered. So I've got tea towels. I love tea towels because they go on sale and I can use them for whatever. Do you see how when I choose this, I can choose where it is that I want. Here's another one, this one's bigger. It's a little harder to do, so imagine I've got this here. Let's get rid of this. This is just the front, so we're only gonna do one side first and we're placing this where, we, where it is that we want. What I like about this is I can look right in here and see that as I go, now I'm on that stitch. I might be, with my seam allowance, having that just in the stitch, the seam allowance, but I really want to use this to line up, fussy cut, frame out what it is that I want. I'm gonna hold this down, because it doesn't have the get a grip. We're gonna take our template with the get a grip. This is gonna go inside here, and what I wanna do is pop. When I pop that fabric, this fussy cut frame is gonna come off, and then what am I gonna do? I'm gonna cut, 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 done. That allows me to get exactly what it is that I want to get. This guy here, this guy here, you can see how those were stitched in. This is one that I used glue on and it's too stiff. So you all figure out what works for you. Again, I think uh, increasing your stitch length and pressing that and ripping out just the stitches that you need will work. I wanna show you some of the fun fabrics that are out there too, pajama bottoms. I'm gonna hold this up a little bit and you can see this is the crotch of pajama bottoms here. The larger, the better, because that gives me a lot of real estate. This is kind of that minky um, Shannon fabric, and what this allows me to do is really get exactly where it is that I want to get. I want to get as many out of here as possible, so I'm going to choose, you can see time, love, butt, coffee, cup, Joe, cup of Joe. You decide what it is it is that you want. If you're looking for that one thing right here, you can see I'm not gonna be able to get a whole lot until I turn it and then I can look to see, can I get it in there? The fussy cut frame lets me see, now I'm off and now I'm on. So you can choose how it is that you want that to be framed. So this is a minky fabric. I like the idea of that, but they also have pajamas in a cotton fabric. And again, you can find these wherever, your um, you know thrift stores, but all of the local, um, you know, I don't want to say the name, but Walmart. That's where I got all of this stuff. Okay, so as you can see here, you place, notice this is all up and down, wrong way. You place this where it works the best. I've got to go up a little bit into that crotch area to be able to get enough to be able to not have the seam allowance and not run off, but you get the idea. You get to place and position what it is you want. If you're gonna use something that is stretchy like this, you might wanna use an iron-on fusible. It's totally up to you as to how much you want this to be perfect. I'm gonna come back to the towels though, because I wanna show you one of the things I really like. We've got uh, winter coming, so this isn't as appropriate, but in the summertime, if I use this on the front, instead of using this on the back side, 
I like to use this, that Terry on the back side. If you make a coffee cozy with this material showing, you probably see it a little bit better in the red, then that's gonna soak up a cold drink. So the fussy cut frame allows you to frame out this part of your design and then you've got all of this for you to be able to use if you got an embroidery machine then you know you can embroider anything out there no cop no talkie before coffee whatever it is that you want so i want to pull over and show you a couple of things when you do this just like i showed you in the previous video it's hard to see this fabric here with the palm trees but when you do stacking your fabric instead of these fabrics are not the same so we wouldn't do you know the right side the wrong side those things together if we do this and this you can see this is the right side this is the right side there's the wrong side when i place these do you see how these don't line up over here let's see if i can show you this doesn't line up that doesn't line up this was right side right side right side right side or wrong side wrong side wrong side what we want to do is make sure that when we lay our fabrics that we're laying the right side and the right side together or the wrong side and the wrong side together i like the right side and the right side together this guy here with this guy here when you go to cut because then you're going to get exactly what it is you want okay so for those of you that say yeah this is great but i don't have time i don't want to do this or i just want it to be faster easier i put together uh, together little kits if you're a shop and you want to do this as a class you can buy the coffee cozy template from me the fussy cup frame and one of these little guys this is a take and make not a make and take but a take and make you take this and you can make it you've got a piece of your batting you've got a piece of fabric for the front a piece of fabric for the back i've given you two uh, buttons and two elastics and i've got all different themes if you have fabric that you're not sure of you say you know i want i want to do dogs i want to do kitties i want to do whatever you can let me know and i can take pictures and kind of give you your choice of what it is that you want and then I'll make a little kit for you. These kits are a whole lot of fun. Again, if you're gonna be doing this with a bunch of friends, if you're doing it with a shop, you're doing it wherever, you know, the idea of having those already done. If you're gonna be making these, cut, 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 cut all your baddings, cut, cut, cut all your fabrics, stack them up and then you kind of play around with your fabrics. Have fun with this. I think you're gonna um, really enjoy the Fussy Cup frame. It's not new, but I didn't do a video on it, so I wanted you to be able to see it. Where are you gonna be able to get this? Winnerdesigns.com. Winner opposite of loser. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, not opposite of spring or summer. W-I-N-N-E-R designs.com. Check out my Facebook. It's Winter Designs for Sewing and Quilting in the search box. I always do giveaways throughout the year. I just finished a really big one, so um, check to see if I have a giveaway coming up, and I'll always post whether I'm doing some kind of a sale or a discount code. I have a discount code a lot of times, too, so if you decide you want to buy something, you know, see if there's a discount code. I usually post that on Facebook. If you'll scroll through, you'll be able to see posts on there. And then my YouTube channel, which is probably where you're seeing this video now, youtube.com forward slash Linda videos. It's one word. Okay, so hopefully I got you some good information. Those of you that have the coffee cozies, now you know what to do with the fussy cut. Have fun with it. If you have any questions, post down below and I'll try to get back to you. And um, have a great time. And thanks a lot, Dave, for watching. <laughs>